Good old 3.5 is out and it's looking amazing. Hello folks, Andrew from Yellow Hat Games here. Welcome to this new video. Today we're going to talk about Godot 3.5. In this new version of the engine, they took a lot of features from Godot 4 and they bring them to us in Godot 3.5. Before we even start, please, if you can support Godot engine with a small amount of money as well, it's going to be great. Just go to patreon.com slash Godot engine and you're going to find everything there. You're going to support this amazing engine. A small amount of money can make the difference. So again, and patreon.com slash engine. The new update just brought us more 3D stuff, improved the 3D version of Godot. Now you know that I'm more a 2D guy, but 3D stuff is great and sooner or later I'm going to jump on that as well. First of all, they improve the physics interpolation in 3D. So basically you have this new option where you can uh, enable physics interpolation. And what is going to happen is that the rendering of this, uh, of the objects, of the movement and everything, it's going to be smooth, but you need to run your logic inside of physics process. Okay, there is a better twinning with scene 3 twin as well, so basically you can have now two twins of the 3.x version and the 3.5 and 4 version. So this time you have the choice. You can make a choice and choose which do you want to use. They introduced the time singleton as well and this one is great because if you're going to make you know that kind of games where you need to wait for a certain amount of time this is going to be cool because in Godot version 4 this is going to be used a lot they say so sooner you start to use it better it's going to be for you <laughs> because if you're going to switch in Godot 4.0 it's going to be used there a lot so that's great that's great okay the next news is beautiful because we have finally Label 3D and Text Mesh. This is pretty amazing because it allows you to put some text, plain text, in 3D space. Uh, that's great. We didn't have this ability. And now we can. Now we can. Now I give it a look myself. And there are different options here. Uh, you have basically a pixel size. It's going to kind of to, to change the dimension of your text. But you have other flags as well. Now, if you go under flags and if you uh, choose on the billboard you choose to enable it basically the text is going always to face the the camera and that's amazing because basically you can finally name your NPCs or uh, every object is going to always face the the player and uh, that's great you can choose to shade it you can choose to double side it uh, to give it depth test you can work with alpha as well now if you go under text here you can modulate the the color basically just go to under modulate and just choose a color that's going to be the color of your text you can choose an outline color as well there's a section here to give your text you know some visible text you can write your text and that's going to appear inside the game now uh, you can give a font, a uh, personalized font. It's going to work like a normal label, so you can use this to, to give it a font. I gave it my own font and this is how it looks. Now, probably you know guys, I'm making kind of a pack of scripts and I just decided to put it inside here and guys, it's working, it's working. Basically, I just changed the extension and it's working well. It's fading my text and everything. That's great, <laughs> that's great. I didn't expect this. <laughs> that's great. So if you want the pack, uh, actually there are just a few scripts, but it's going to be improved every day. It, you can find the download link down below, so you can import it to your projects and you have some ready to use scripts if you want. Now, another amazing feature is accessing nodes by unique names. This is going to be great because accessing nodes in the scene 3, if you don't remember the right position, it's kind of a nightmare. In general, it's a nightmare because you need to remember how to get to that specific node, which is the parent, which is the uh, sub-parent and so on. That that's kind of a nightmare, but now you can access them in such an easier way. Now, games from Square say that this may bring some spaghetti code, but that's fine. That's fine. We we just need this feature. We have now new flow containers. Basically, this is going to be great for changing the resolution of your game because it's going to kind of expand everything, the UI. And this is going to be great for Android, actually, for exploring on mobile, because each mobile phone maybe has its own 
um, dimensions and its own screen dimensions resolution and changing your game according to that resolution is going to be great because now you can change the UI to fit that uh, dynamically fit so that's great now another amazing uh, node is the occluder shape polygon 3d this is going to occlude stuff on your game it's amazing because you can um, create holes in the walls or I don't know hide some walls uh, hide some elements in the game that's great basically that's a new feature that you can use now I gave it myself a look you you just need to put the occluder node inside your 3d scene you just just give it uh, a shape on the shape uh, I gave to mine just a polygon and it's going to create this four point uh, 2d shape kind of and and as long as it moves and occludes the the whole um, mesh 3d mesh it's going to occlude it but I'm not sure if I'm using it in the correct way be because what I did want to do was kind of occluding just one of the walls time to time but I'm not sure how this works so it's definitely to, to dig and to find workarounds to to make you know that kind of look in isometric kind of games like the sims and stuff like that but this is going to be for another day <laughs> we have definitely some android stuff we can use godot engine on android not my thing but if you want guys you can use godot engine on android as well it's going to run it's still experimental but it's running and you can do some game dev on android we have now material overlay Basically, you can kind of overlay materials up on other materials, giving this interesting look to them. Basically, you can highlight your materials or you can give uh, some glowing, uh, some, some interesting stuff, basically. And you can use it. It's going to kind of change a little bit your approach to shaders and stuff. There are other improvements as well. Line drawing in 2D has been optimized, for example. Now, direction shadow atlas size can be now be adjusted at the runtime canvas layer now can make use of the visibility property it can be hide and shown just like canvas items and there are other many improvements um, some cool stuff just some cool stuff okay guys i'm pretty excited and this was all we're at the end of the video hopefully you liked it and uh, let me know which is the new future that you like most. Uh, are you going to use 3D in your games? Are, are you happy with the new improvements? And are you happy with the fact that they kept both the training stuff <laughs> inside Godot? Because somehow people like the training nodes. So <laughs> it's, it's still there. It's still there for you to use. So leave a like, subscribe and let me know down in the comment section what did you like most. And you're waiting for the future and that wasn't here but you hopefully you're going to get with the new versions. I'm Andres from Yellowhead Games, thank you for watching and most important, keep devving games!